Achilles heel of the fiat money system. The fiat money system will not disappear just like that. Any expectation or hopes to that end should not be tempered. Yes, the fiat money system could collapse, yet there is a significant likelihood it will persist longer than most people might think. This prolonged existence may come at a cost. An increased state encroachment on the freedoms of citizens and entrepreneurs would be more profound than most people realize. Much ink has been spilled about the impending collapse of the international fiat money system. A debate that naturally gains momentum in times of crisis, as witnessed in the aftermath of the 2008-2009 global financial market debacle or the politically dictated global lockdown crash of 2020-2021. At the same time, however, it is entirely justified to harbor significant concerns regarding the fiat money system. After all, it is plagued by blatant economic and ethical defects. Are you wondering about the essence of fiat money? Let's break it down into three characteristics. Number one. State-sponsored central banks wield the monopoly over the production of fiat central bank money. Upon obtaining fiat central bank money, commercial banks are allowed to generate their own money, known as fiat commercial bank money. Number two, fiat money is typically created through bank lending, without real savings backing. It's essentially created out of thin air, or ex nihilo, as it is called in Latin. And number three, fiat money predominantly exists in dematerialized form. While it may manifest as colorful printed pieces of paper, its primary existence resides in digital entries on computer systems, represented by bits and bytes. Whether we are talking about the US dollar, the euro, Chinese renminbi, Japanese yen, British pound or Swiss franc, they are all fiat money. We know from monetary theory that fiat money is not neutral or innocent. Unlike monies emerging from voluntary agreements in the free marketplace, fiat money was introduced through state intervention, involving coercion and violence, leading to many negative effects. Fiat money is inherently inflationary, gradually losing its purchasing power over time. This phenomenon disproportionately benefits a select few at the expense of the broader population. Moreover, fiat money causes economic instability by perpetuating cycles of boom and bust that disrupt market equilibria and create societal inequalities. It drives excessive indebtedness within economies and fuels the unchecked expansion of the state at the expense of citizens' and companies' freedoms. Last but not least, fiat money is dishonest money, and engaging with fiat money daily erodes the morals and values of the people involved in its circulation. Despite these problems, once fiat money has been put into circulation, it is here to stay. It won't disappear just like that. Why? Fiat money fosters what I have previously described as collective corruption, wherein many people become proverbially ensnared by the structure the fiat money establishes, fostering dependency and entrenching its influence. Consider this. Fiat money acts as a catalyst for the expansion of the state, making it bigger and more powerful. Companies receive new orders from the state prompting adjustments in production and employment to meet artificial demand. Or, people keep their life savings in fiat money. They invest, directly or indirectly, in government bonds and bank debentures and maintain time and savings deposits. Gradually, people become profoundly reliant on the perpetuation of the fiat money system, consenting to nearly any measure proposed by the state and the special interest groups taking advantage of it to keep the fiat money system going. 
Yet, akin to Achilles' heel in Greek mythology, fiat money has a crucial vulnerability. In Homer's epic Iliad, Hector meets the demise at the hands of Achilles. In retaliation, Hector's brother Paris strikes Achilles with a poisoned arrow, targeting his vulnerable heel, ultimately leading to the downfall of the seemingly invincible warrior. The Achilles heel of the fiat money system lies in its dependence on the demand for money. But what does this demand for money signify? Essentially, it reflects people's desire to hold money, influenced by a multitude of factors. For instance, people tend to maintain money balances relative to their income. As income rises, so does the desire to hold money. The demand for money typically diminishes when interest rates rise. This is because holding on to money entails opportunity costs, when higher returns could be earned through, say, bank deposits and bonds. History demonstrates that the demand for money remains relatively steady when there is a high level of trust in the currency, meaning people are not worried that the purchasing power of their money will decline or be destroyed. Given this insight, it's clear how states and their central banks seek to handle the fiat money system in their favor. Their primary strategy involves creating illusions and deceiving the population to maintain control and influence. For instance, people are often fed the narrative that inflation of 2% equates to stable money, a claim that is, of course, inherently false. In reality, a 2% inflation rate destroys the purchasing power of money by 2% every year. Furthermore, statistical goods price indices are often cobbled together to present a lower inflation rate than experienced in the market. This manipulation serves to downplay the true extent of monetary debasement. Additionally, central banks, officials and mainstream economists frequently attribute inflation to various external factors, such as, say, price gouging by greedy businessmen or supply disruptions by all producing nations, while fiercely rejecting the notion that inflation is a monetary phenomenon, resulting from central banks' fiat money printing. In fact, central banks are determined to avert a permanent drop in the demand for money at all costs. When the demand for money falls, people tend to exchange their money for alternative assets, such as stocks, real estate, precious metals, etc. Consequently, the prices of these goods surge, further exacerbating the decline in the demand for money. In extreme scenarios, this can trigger a widespread flight from money, causing a collapse of the financial and economic system. To maintain the fiat money system, central banks try to adjust the level of inflation to, firstly, ensure a gradual and ongoing erosion of the value of money, subtle enough to either go unnoticed or to be reluctantly accepted by the people. Secondly, this controlled inflationary pressure acts as a defense against episodes of goods price deflation, which have the potential to make the fiat money system come crashing down. Lastly, central banks aim to prevent situations where inflation spirals out of control, where hyperinflation destroys people's demand of fiat money entirely. Is this delicate balancing act sustainable? Recent decades seem to suggest so. Despite numerous crises and the chronic erosion of the purchasing power of money, the demand for money in many economies remained relatively stable. But can the balancing act succeed in the long term? Probably not. The primary concern is the enormous accumulation of debt within the fiat money system, eventually reaching a tipping point of unsustainability. At that juncture, people will be confronted with the question, should the fiat money system collapse under the weight of deflationary pressures, or should the outstanding debt be financed by creating new money? 
Unfortunately, history suggests that in a time of existential crises, people consider expanding the money supply as the lesser of two evils. Once initiated, a deliberate inflation policy becomes incredibly challenging to contain, let alone reverse. It has the propensity to spiral out of control, potentially culminating in high inflation or even hyperinflation, thereby precipitating a collapse in the demand for money and eroding the very foundations of the fiat money system. However, in such a dire scenario, one must reckon with the state's determination to avert the demise of its fiat money regime at all costs. The state, as we know it today, can be expected to exhaust all available measures to safeguard the continuity of its monetary system. Consider this. In response to crises, the state resorts to drastic measures, such as imposing price and capital controls and even nationalizing banks and large corporations, transforming the economy into a highly regulated command economy. Under such circumstances, the state assumes unprecedented control over production, dictating what goods will be produced, how much, when and by whom, even regulating who will be allowed to consume how much and when. In other words, the economies end in a form of fascism. A bleak outcome indeed. However, it doesn't have to be this way. There are ways out. Much like Achilles had a vulnerable heel in Homer's Iliad, the fiat money system also possesses vulnerabilities that can be addressed. To mitigate the damage caused by the fiat money system, or even dismantle it altogether, the first measure must be on targeting its Achilles heel, weakening the demand for fiat money. The less fiat money people demand, the smaller the damage inflicted by the fiat money system will be. But how can this objective be accomplished? First and foremost by educating the people about the significant harm perpetuated by the continued existence of fiat money and the consequences it has. This entails highlighting the adverse impacts it has on individuals and their communities and encouraging people to use fiat money for transactions rather than for savings. In other words, discouraging investments in government bonds, time or savings deposits in banks, while encouraging investing in tangible assets such as stocks, precious metals, land and real estate. Furthermore, seizing the support for governments or politicians who endorse the fiat money system and fail to take actions to dismantle it. Ultimately, of course, it is crucial to inform people that sound money is indeed possible. This involves advocating people's freedom to choose their preferred money, whether it be gold, silver, bitcoin or any other alternative. The concept of a free market in money is easy to understand and, from a technical standpoint, quite easy to implement. By allowing individuals the autonomy to select their preferred currency, we effectively target the Achilles heel of the fiat money system, ultimately benefiting the vast majority of the people. Thank you very much for your attention. If you enjoyed the podcast, please like it, share it, ring the bell and please follow my channel.